on a Wednesday, presented by Ross Mortgage. If you need a name and a team you can count on, Ross Mortgage, Scott Morris's crew, his team, fantastic, reliable, trusted, and uh, a program and outfit that you can count upon. You're going to meet one of those team members today and Tova Payne. Uh, I'm very excited for, for the introduction of Tova to the community on the I Love Seville Network. Scott is going to speak from the heart today as well, um, and I think it's going to be something that folks need to stand by, listen, and uh, realize just what kind of stand-up guy this guy is. Joey Rifkin, the director, as Judah Wickhauer is um, having fun in the sun in the Outer Banks, although I will say... Right now in the Outer Banks, it's in the upper 40s and, and mid-50s right now with, with Judah. With some projected, uh, <laughs> hey, I tell you what, if you like to fish, Jonah, I'll tell you where the key to my shed down there is with an enormous amount of equipment. It is big drum fishes on weather down there with some, some big waves. There you go. There you go. Joey, we'll go to the studio on the three shot and welcome our guests here. Um, guys, pleasure to have you. Um, Tova Payne, why don't we go ladies first, and then Scott, we'll, we'll pass the show on to you. Tova, if you could, introduce yourself to everybody that's watching the program. Hello, my name is Tova Payne. I've um, been in the real estate agency, or um, real estate for about two years now. I was a transaction coordinator um, for about two years, and then I started working for Scott earlier this year, um, just kind of dabbling in being a loan officer and just the whole mortgage industry. I have two little kids, um, my homeschool and work full-time, which is also very, very interesting. <laughs> how, how, I mean, we got to highlight that. I mean, you're a rock star here. How do you, how do you manage that? My uh, wife and I, we have a son and a newborn on the way due around Thanksgiving. He's got three. One item that is very different than our scenario, Scott, is the homeschooling element. I mean, that's quite impressive here. Please tell us how you've managed that. Uh, well, I do get to work from home quite a bit, so that kind of helps. Um, I try to get the kids up basically before I start work and kind of get some of their school done and then just go from there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, let's go to Scott Morris. Scott, the show is yours. Anywhere you want to go, uh, my friend. Good morning. Uh, yeah, so I kind of wanted to... It took some time for me to get to where I could deliver this, um, but there's I've been absent from the show in some times. I've had John sit in and uh, John Snow also on the team and some other things we've done back and forth. Uh, I was diagnosed with a pretty aggressive form of nasal pharyngeal cancer back in May, so I went through months of chemo. I was still fitting the show in then. Work has not changed. Uh, I'm more than halfway through uh, radiation chemo combination treatment right now. Uh, the next, I've got three and a half more weeks or less than that actually uh, remaining. Uh, so I'm, there may be some points where I, I'm, I'm still not here on a Wednesday here and there. I get that knocked out at 7 a.m. in Northern Virginia, head straight down, get everything going, whether it be team and work related over the phone, or get in for the show and, and kind of talk about everything that's going on. So um, I, I, not, I wasn't here for the pity party. It wasn't something that I really knew I, I felt comfortable delivering. But now I'm at the stage where I kind of want to explain the absenteeism. Um, those of you who have worked for me, and I want to say big, big thank yous to Diana Banks, Aaron Cardo Searcy, uh, and any number of other realtor partners, Danny Tuggle, uh, Nick Hill, I could go on and on and on uh, with, with people who were aware of what was going on, um, uh, Roseanne, Roxanne uh, Carter, uh, just a limitless number of people who, who knew the situation and still trusted me with their business. And we got you know, the, the same or higher level of service provided to your clients. And that's what you're going to continue seeing going forward. And then in November, I'm going to go to absolutely back to crushing it and harassing all of you and being, you know, uh, helping grow this branch in a way that, uh, that, I, that I've truly dreamed and see fit for it to be. Um, Scott Morris, um, appreciate that uh, straightforwardness and um, honesty. Um, Talk to us about the, uh, the process. Talk to us about uh, you know, the last few months. Um, we've seen it here, some of it, um, on the studio and the network. And I've been quite impressed with um, your fortitude and the support you have in the community, the support you have from your family. Um, I think you're going you're gonna to kill this. You're going to crush it. Yeah, um, I feel that too. And you know, I'm, 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 I operate everything from uh, a positive mindset. Like, 
Uh, one of the things that I want to get into on the show later is kind of this entrepreneurial spirit that, uh, that drives all of us. There's a, a new book out by uh, the, the dude from AOL uh, called Brain, 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 sorry, uh, Rise of the Rest. Um, and it's really about uh, how uh, people get dis dissuaded from starting their own thing uh, if they're not in Seattle or Massachusetts or New York. Um, and for people who are new coming into this business, uh, Jon Snow came in in March and uh, just the year got more and more difficult from a loan offer perspective, but he's continued to grow and grow on a pace uh, by just doing the things that I told him would work are continuing to work and with a positive spirit saying that if he had to make the same decision today that he made back then, that's where he would be. This is where he would be. And if you don't go into these things like I struggled in the beginning mentally with how do I you know I can't I don't want to I refuse to talk to people about this because I don't want it to be viewed as we don't want to stress him out or he's not going to do as good of a job or or all of these 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 I love these paranoias these outset this 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 self-talk was not encouraging towards success and the sooner I let that go and got in a mode of positive mindset overcomes all really kind of shifted you know where we were going in overall direction you're getting props um, from the viewers and listeners kevin higgins and greenwood kevin we love when you watch the show he says uh the fans of this show and network have your back scott morris great job in moving forward my football team will say a prayer for you in our pregame huddle at 5 30 p.m today who are they playing? Scott Morris, you've got this today. Kevin, who is your team playing at 5.30 today? He is the coach of the team, Kevin Higgins, and just a champion of all things good in this community. Um, I love you, man. Um, I uh, love you too, bro. I appreciate all the support, everything going this far. Like, it's it meant a lot. Put in, um, it's resonating with the community here. Put in perspective the, uh, the treatment, the challenges, the time, the effort that's gone into it. I mean, we're talking drives to Northern Virginia here. Yeah, every day I'm in Fairfax. Um, the uh, part of its schedule, you know, uh, time blocking, making sure that uh, you're putting the right thing, the right priorities in the right place. Um, Keith Smith, is that black coffee, sir? <laughs> Just asking. Um, putting the right things in place and uh, in the right pri and prioritizing what's the most important. Um, once I, you know, I wasn't working for someone else and had gone off on my own. You find that a lot of your thought goes into um, how are you serving the people that rely on you to serve them. So you, you, no matter what's going on in your life, is less important than uh, your employees. Uh, you serve them; they don't serve you. Uh, your children, your, 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 your family, your wife, those, those are all things that, uh, that you can't stop pouring into just because of whatever else is occupying your, your mind space. Awesome. Um, Tova, we'll get you in the mix here. Um, and before we get off this topic, um, in the pra it's, it's the Falcons on Saturday. He says, we're going to destroy them like Scott is going to destroy cancer. We have a scrimmage today and some practice. Oh, it's really, I don't know how old those kids are, but the Falcons better watch out. Um, put in perspective the, uh, the team, the environment at Ross Mortgage and, and Scott's team here. I mean, it sounds like it's very family oriented. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Scott has always, like, he's the best boss I've had, honestly, to be completely honest. Um, and he has not really let this shake him at all whatsoever. He's just kept plugging along, so... Um, multiple folks are saying, Scott, you got this. Grayson watching the program saying he's going to pray for you with his family. Um, you got Suzanne Bright watching the program, echoing um, the thoughts that we have, Scott Morris, and our thoughts and prayers. 
um, watching the program today. Scott Morris has uh, offered a level of humanization and personalization and localization that I think uh, shows you why he would be a fantastic guy to work alongside in what is ar arguably the most difficult decision of your life outside of who you marry, and that's buying a home, and certainly in this volatile real estate market. Let's talk about some volatility. Let's go. The show's yours. Um, anywhere you want to begin on the volatility, massive amounts of questions ready for you already. But show is yours for a monologue, please. Already heard that you talked about uh, you know people who are rock locking in over seven. Um, we're still quoting without significant points, discount points in the sixes um, for your you know uh, better better side of six eighty plus credit situation. Um, re regardless of program, that's government and conventional. Um, and what we're seeing today, we're seeing some pullback in the U.S. tenure. Uh, we're seeing some uh, recovery from the, we took three days uh, that totaled uh, over 200 basis point loss in the uh, MBS market, which basically what that, what that equivalates to, what, what, that, what that means to someone listening who's not uh, as savvy with that lingo. The uh, mortgage-backed security market uh, is kind of what loans are wholesaled into, and it's investor appetite for those. Uh, that, in combination with uh, what the, the forecast from the U.S. 10 year is telling them, is kind of where to price and where they're going to land uh, with some of these numbers. Uh, the U.S. 10-year moved uh, 20 basis points in two days, pushing it up to 4% for the first time since 2006. Uh, rates get chaotic at that point because the, in, the, the investors don't even know where they want to price. Um, then there's some other secondary arbitrage where uh, the coupon isn't as good as it was and uh, – there's some spec purchasing that goes on that, uh, and that spec purchasing is like a Fannie Freddie direct kind of thing where you have to package so much bundled in and you can get a discount price going forward. And that became a hot mess uh, on the secondary market as well. Um, but what I'm getting at is a couple of days of chaos. I sent out some messages to, uh, to Keith, uh, some other realtor partners and said, look, if you're, if somebody's telling you that things are bad right now, like, put it out of your head. Uh, let's, let's talk on Wednesday to Friday is where we start to see some normalcy return. And plus, so much of this trading is algorithm driven that when things start getting bad, all of a sudden they get exponentially bad very, very fast until humans step in and go, wait, shit, this is, this is oversold, isn't it? Uh, and oversold being, being the bond market. The bond market is severely oversold right now. Uh, on top of this started with Fed speak. Um, you had some uh, Fed bank managers come out, say some things that were uh, derogatory to the market. And then you had Jerome Powell in a conference tell people to go back and listen to my uh, remarks at Brain. What's the place that they were? Wyoming. Went? Wyoming. Jackson yeah, Hole. Jackson Hole. Um, and in Jackson Hole, he said, we're in this for the duration and then some. Now, him reiterating that tells people that, you know, I, I, I drank the Kool-Aid. I thought we were going to stop at, uh, I thought 3.75 was the peak of the, the U.S. tenure. I bet that gets corrected in the next couple of days. Because on top of what we're seeing with the Fed speak that scared the you-know-what out of the market that created this chaos and the Fed managers, now we're starting to see real-time deterioration of the global market, meaning the sterling is about to meet the dollar parity for the first time in its history. Um, it's a hot mess out it's there. It's a hot mess out there. Yeah. Uh, Germany, all, Europe is forecasting, is heavily forecasting recession, and China is a disaster right now. Russia is a mess. Uh, with with all of that is going on, that is going to be a a benefit. And I'm not trying to be like, hey, this we're also facing a recession, and that's going to be a great thing, guys. Um, you, if you're listening in this footprint, for you it probably is. Uh, the university isn't going anywhere. The government isn't going anywhere. Uh, the things that drive. Uh, 
commerce in this area are not going anywhere. Um, and what we're going to see is this oversold bond market is going to start to pull back. Um, and hopefully faster than the rate increases continue. While they, the Fed continues to stay with its policy, I think we saw a lot of temper tantrum, taper tantrum uh, that pushed people out, just fleeing the bond market, and then algorithms helping that money accelerate. As reality sets in, we're going to land closer to where I said we were going to land, and it's already happening two days in. Um, there's too much other, Keith, just sit down. too many other things going on in the world uh, than, than at, this, at this time. I like it. I like it. Tova, we'll get you in the mix here. Um, um, Vanessa Parkhill watching the program, Bill McChenzie watching the program. Um, let's do this from um, Kevin Yancey's giving you um, massive props, Scott Morris. Let's do this from a layman's perspective. Okay. Just everyday chatter um, that we may hear like around the water cooler or like around the streets of downtown Charlottesville. What do you see going on with the market right now? From a very unprofessional. Yeah, just very layman's perspective. Um, I see a lot of chaos. A lot of people are afraid to buy houses right now. Um, I actually have a very close friend who's um, in a construction loan, interest only loan right now. Um, and he posted on Facebook, but at this rate, you know, I wouldn't even be able to afford my, lo my, my mortgage at this point. And I'm like, I texted him and I was like, Hey, like, let's, it's not, it's not as bad as it seems like it, it looks bad, but it'll get better. Um, so I just see a lot of people just kind of freaking out and not really, I, I mean, it's just, you text, Typically, we as humans are like, oh, this is really bad, and we just freak out, and uh, we let that kind of emotion take control of logic, and it's like, well, it can't keep going up, and even this isn't that bad at this point. Like, if you look at it over the span of time, it's really, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. Very well said. Very well said. Heather um, Brown giving you props, saying you're an absolute rock star. Um, she's watching on the feed. Keith Smith is in... Um, from a car board meeting. Keith, we'll get you in the mix here. Vanessa Parkhill, hello. Um, where do you want to begin, Keith, with uh, the volatility in real estate? Um, I'm sure you guys saw the, the, um, the, the cooling of the market yesterday uh, with the Schiller Index. Um, that was... That was part of it. That's part of what drove uh, some of the, the red on the screen with uh, builders who are publicly traded. Uh, but, I mean, but you know what? Those are not those are not the people that I care about. Um, I'm now that they're they're Stanley Martin's big. They're they're multi-state, uh, but they I think their projects at least locally are kind of fit in what I'm like. They're bigger than your Liberty. They're bigger, but your your local small builders, um, who, who I think are going to continue to command demand uh, over these national builders who've got to put such a big footprint down. They're not buying. Uh, 20, a, a 20 acre lot, busting it into fives and doing four houses there. Uh, their, their, their projects, I think, are going to take less red tape and continue to succeed. And that's what's going to help us in an affordable housing thing. And as long as all of you counties that are out there listening do your job and help them facilitate that, then uh, that's going to continue to help things as well. Keith, jump in here. You know, first of all, I love you. I'm going to tell you that in front of everybody. I love you too, bro. I love you, brother. Um, I talked to your other brother this morning. Excuse me? I talked to one of your other brothers this morning. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. You okay? I talked to his wife, too. <laughs> well, I'm Lord. doing good. So to, to pick up, so thank you, everybody, for allowing me to show up late. Um, I, as Jerry said, I was at a car board meeting, and um, I needed to hang around a little bit longer because I didn't want to get voluntold for something, so I had to control what I was going to get voluntold for. Do they voluntold you when you're not there? Is that oh, how that totally, works? Totally, totally. This is why, I think this is why Yona says you need to get off these boards. <laughs> And start focusing on earning income. That's, that's what she says here. So, uh, so you two guys are talking. So look, Jerry, everything you read in the news, a playoff of what I think what Scott was saying when I walked in, was everything you're reading in the, in the media is all macro, right? So you need to take a look at 
to micro markets in what each individual market is doing. And I was thinking about this on the way in. Um, you know, there's only one local market that's actually kind of going backwards a little bit as far as price increase goes. Volume is dropping, right? Volume is going to drop. It is clearly in the bear market. It is clearly in the 20 to 30 percent year over year range on that end of it. But we're still growing in, in dollar value. And on the way in, I had an um, interesting conversation with a client that, uh, oh my God, it took us seven days to get a contract on their house. And uh, they were wondering, you know, uh, you know, has the market, oh, shifted too much? And, and it really hasn't. Um, but, you know, the, the, the units are going to decrease. The difference between the haves and the have-nots are going to increase, unfortunately. I think the people that are most um, affected by what's going on are going to get impacted even more. Uh, but the market on a whole, um, I do not see, you know, values going backwards. And I, as I walked in, I think that's what you were trying to say. Or am I yeah, wrong? Uh, no, that's uh, in part. I think they're, they're, we're going to see and we're already starting to see. Now, mind you, I run from like Reston to Roanoke. So what I see is far different in certain places than others. Uh, we're, you're starting to see... A t you, I think you've already seen a 10% correction in portions of Northern Virginia. Um, correction in? Pricing. Got it. Versus so, last year. Uh, yeah, so 550 is now 500. Got it. I mean, we're seeing that in a lot of markets in Virginia. And it's starting to creep into Central Virginia. I mean, I know, I, I, I understand we want to keep a positive, a rosy approach here. But the viewers and listeners are entirely too sophisticated to that. In fact, they're putting it literally on the feed right now. Kevin Yancey has said Northern Virginia real estate reported 24% decrease in sales last month, and now he's highlighting the valuation drops, which you just mentioned. Okay. Um, but I think part of what, uh, and one of the things that I wanted to tag Tovan for, was the numbers on uh, the rate difference between uh, six and three quarters and four and a half percent, and what that does to your your monthly payment as far as your purchasing power goes um, which also in turns affects if you're shopping at the tippy tippy top of your price point um, how much that's actually moving the needle for you um, or how much it's moved the needle in the last 90 days so are you are you just to, to kind of take a little further conversation on that so the so maybe we're not, maybe I'm looking at the wrong set of data. Maybe I should be looking at the last 90 days versus the 90 days before that, or should I be looking at the last, to, to Kevin's point, the last 90 days versus last year's 90 days? Last, I don't last, I don't even see last year anymore. Last year, okay. last year does not count. I and mean, if you're comparing statistics, again, in the steroid era from to reality, compare this to 2018. Compare that this to 2018, and then get, and then you'll feel better about yourself because you're not make, you know, you're not, you, 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 you just. How easy was it? Look, the people who are going to survive this from a professional standpoint are the people who take action now. They implement things and they move on and they get in front of the right people. I was on the phone with somebody, uh, uh, Jared Spencer, who I forgot to mention in the thank you, people, professional, you know, that's just. 100% been a standby, me and all of this. I didn't say you either, but I was going to get to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. So, I understand. Um, We're family, so it doesn't matter. So, if you are not, this relationship is, uh, this, this business is full of a lot of relationships of people who smile when they don't mean it. Like, and I'm very, I'm like, you know, have you ever been to Germany? They don't smile. They don't smile. <laughs> they, you know, smile when it, you know, when it, when there's like a cause for it. Um, You're trying to get me into trouble. <laughs> I want to, I want to work with people that I like, know, and trust, because those are the relationships that that generate the best level of impact, not only for us but for our clients. Um, I never want to uh, spend my time rolling my eyes when I see the phone ring, like. You know that's that's not what this is. So, but back to my point. You're, if you're if you're comparing 2018 to 2022, then 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 you're in a real aspect. If you're using 2020 and 2021, bro, those numbers weren't real. The government had their thumb on the scale. There were you know all these other things going on. We're gonna 
You yeah. got to play devil's advocate for the sake of a talk show. Go. Devil's yeah. advocate for the sake of a talk show. I understand what you're saying, that it was the steroid era versus the dead ball era versus the testing HGH era in Major League Baseball. That's the baseball analogy you're referencing. I get that. Straightforward conversation, sake of a talk show. A lot of people purchased in 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. And a and lot of people. A lot of people. And, and I guess to say that those purchases and those valuations aren't real, some of those folks are going to be like, but hey, I bought my house here then. So that's going to go to my point when we talk rates here and, and, and the difference between four and a half, um, which we didn't even hit until this year, um, and six point. You know, 6.65 or 6.75. Uh, but all right, let's look at it from uh, the devil's advocate again. Yeah. Uh, we can go down this rabbit hole. What if you're a business, uh, what if you're a transportation business who was trying to compare your numbers from 2020 and early 2021 uh, to now? You're going to look you like superstars. Do you show, d yeah. Is all this growth just magical? No, it's not. Um, but then how do you go back to tracking real growth? And then I see you go back to the third quarter of 2019, and then you start now and you go, okay, where are we now compared to then before the government turned us off, made everybody paranoid, and people were scared to touch or drink or sit or sip or sitting around in the car with anybody who's not wearing a freaking mask? I think, I think that's a great point. Uh, Keith, we'll get you in the mix. Um, I definitely want to hear what Tova has to say on this. Um, I think a lot of the people who purchased in the back half of 2020, let's call it from, let's call it all of 2021, the first four months of 2022, and the final quarter of 2020 are pretty damn scared right now. And why? Tell me why. Because they purchase at the peak of the market and those valuations aren't justified right now. people who purchased in 2020 didn't purchase at the peak of the market. Q4, Q4 2020. Still not the peak of the market. 2021 and early 2022. Those people, their home values are not what's equivalent to where they are right what's now. What's their mortgage rate? They're, that's, that's a good counter is they got a low mortgage rate, but their home values are not what they are right and now. And, and, where, and by where they are now? Look, I, I bought a second home that I'm still... I, that that X like so much in in value that I'm still getting cash out letters from my current servicer, and I'm like, you know, if I can do that, then why don't you take this effing mortgage insurance off? Um, but they're like, well, you've had it for less than 24 months, right? Like, yeah, you don't seem to care about this versus that, right? Um, but point being. If they believe the valuation is still there, and the value, some of the valuation is, and even with these people who are, who are, who are like, oh my God, my house not, isn't worth what it was worth, it's like, uh, it's not, you're not, unless. They're only saving grace right now, and I'm straightforward, and that's what people appreciate on this show. They're only saving grace right now is their interest rate. And that interest rate is going to keep them in that house because when, they're not going to find one any lower than that. Until. 36 months from now when the valuation's back. This isn't, a, this isn't the cliff. This isn't the cliff that people think it was. Next, next year, next year, first quarter of next year, uh, the talk will, as soon as, one, as soon as we start to see better inflation data, as soon as the Fed says, not only are we not raising, we're, we're, we're pausing at this point, and we're, we're looking at, towards future meetings to where our next step will be, as soon as that message is delivered, Rates go back to the force. So this is the time to hire a trusted professional. And we'll talk a little bit about that in, in a minute. So I just, while you guys were talking, I just looked, Albemarle County, single family detached, no new construction, the last quarter of 20, uh, 2021, excuse me, the last quarter of 2021, the median sales price in Albemarle County was 540. The last 90 days was 553. So you're appreciating globally, right? You're appreciating, but just not like it was with double digit appreciations. It's more in the single digit numbers, which is where it has to be. So look, if you bought in 2020 at 3%, you're appreciating a 3% mortgage, you're appreciating at probably 3%, 4%, whatever the norm is on that end of it, you're just not appreciating at 20%. Your house value is not going down at the moment, right? That may all change because We've been talking about recession forever. If right? you purchased at 300 and got 
three percent. Let's say, let's say that the twenty percent valuation was just not real. Yeah. Let's say the appreciation, the true appreciation, is three or five percent. We should do the people that purchased in Q1 of this year. Okay. That's the question. The, the pe people of Q1 of this year, and okay. there was a freaking boatload of people that did that. At the Q tail end. Q4, Q4 of 2021, a boatload of people okay. purchased that. All right. Let's look at, the, if we call that the peak, that's, they're probably in for a, a, a more difficult psychological battle than any of the rest of them. However, if you purchased any time before that, and let's say you, you got 10% valuation that turns out to be closer to three, and you put, you bought a three hundred thousand dollar house. You put down three percent. In twelve months, let's say you get that true three percent appreciation, you got one hundred percent of your investment back in equity. There's not another. There's not another thing that exists on the face of this planet that works that way. So we have a millennial at the table. Two. I'm a millennial. We have two millennials yeah. at the table. Uh, I'm technically a geriatric millennial. I think okay. I fall so right in the last. We have lots of millennials. Although, at the I, table. although I claim Gen X because y'all, y'all got your. But from a millennial, <laughs> from a millennial's perspective, right, right, you, you, you communicate with other folks your age, right, on a regular basis. What is the water cooler conversation around real estate? Should I buy a house? Should I not buy a oh, house? Most, most people do not want to buy. Okay. I kind of have to like, now that I'm in, in the industry, when I was not in the industry, I had no idea what I was talking about. Sure. Still, you know, on the cusp there. But um, yeah, then if I was not in the job that I am now, I would, I would say I'm not buying. It's a horrible idea. But now that I understand, like, okay, this is not, like, rates fluctuate all the time. We've seen that over the course of, years now like when I bought my or when we built our house I was at you know two points or two uh, percent higher than I am now um, and I refinanced within three months because it was in 2020 and so it dropped um, but even now I'm still saying you know are you going to invest in a house where you can actually recoup what your, your investment or are you going to wait and keep paying rent that is also going up exponentially now and 100 per, the, yeah 100 yeah. percent out like you don't get it back yeah. most younger millennials and gen zers are choosing either not to buy a house or are very scared about buying a house right now and i that, just want to be very straightforward and that here. reason is because interest rates are up again mm -hmm. and that reason is you've got to bring a bunch of cash to yeah. the table and you at your beginning of your life or, or your, that portion of your life, you don't have that cash, right? And, uh, but to go back to it, so, so you're, you're, I want you to switch yourself back to you're not doing this job right now. So the reason why you were thinking about not buying was why? What, what, was, what was the key couple of points? Um, well, for me, I, we had the money to put down, so that wasn't really an issue for us. For me, it was the monthly payment. I couldn't get over, I wanted a certain month monthly payment and I could not get over that. So that brings up a point that we've been talking about forever on mm -hmm. the show. Most people buy by monthly payment, Yeah. right? As interest rates go up, that, oh yeah. my God, we're not gonna do that. So we become an educator, right? She's got become, numbers for you on that too. Excuse yeah. Me. She's got numbers I, I, for you I, I was, on that I'm excited right now. for that. So I'm gonna shut up and let you give numbers yeah. <laughs> and drink my coffee. I mean, where do you want me to start at? 350 or 350? Uh, start at 650 and work your way down. We'll get this really close to you here because you got knowledge you're dropping here. <laughs> All right, so um, if you're looking at FHA, I didn't do conventional, I just did strictly FHA um, and just P&I. I didn't do taxes, insurance, anything like that. Um, but FHA 650 and the, in, the credit score was like 690 or 689, I think I ran it as. Um, at 6.625, you're looking at $4,086 per month. And then at a 4.5, you're looking at $3,233 a month. So you're getting like almost an $850. Massive delta. Yeah. Yeah. That's massive. Yeah. Right? We are all in agreement. We are all in agreement that for anyone, lowering your mortgage payment by $850 a month is massive. Massive. Yeah. Yeah, that's all your groceries and, and a, probably a couple of your utility bills a month. And then yeah. you add on top of that, the average family is spending roughly $400, $450 more just due to inflation. Yeah. So that number is, is another 450 bucks on top of that. Yeah. Um, and then if you go down to, I did FHA 550, 
6.65, again, just P&I, $3,457 a month. And then at 4.5, the same price range, just P&I, $2,736 per month. So again, that's like $700, $720 um, difference between those two payments. So again, that's a huge number. Like I, I mean, I could get like grocery trip and a half in that. Right. Actually, almost three grocery and trips. And don't you, do you, I look at it that way. Is that yeah. how you look at yeah. it? Yeah. Like, I look at this money savings every month is, this is what we spend each Housing, week on groceries. food, mm -hmm. yeah. those are your two of your big, that's the, the, your, how, always going to be your household's two biggest expenses. So everyone at this table is in the three bigs, two of the three bigs anyway, well, one of the three bigs, food, shelter, and clothing, right? That's the three things. So we're focusing on shelter in this particular particular career. I don't think anything that you guys ever see me wear regularly outside of some Nikes that we won't talk about um, my annual clothing expense is low 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 so why are you looking at me when you're saying that you fancy <laughs> man you got, look, I, you got wine glasses on the shirt I, I got wine you know, glasses I, on I, my shirt I'd take a wine glass right there now um, so this comments come in we have a lot of comments coming in here and these are just real people with real comments Asking real questions here, okay? This on com real talk. On real talk. I mean, like, we got we got to shoot them straight here. Um, this comment has come in. Can anyone on this panel explain to me how our son or daughter can afford a $300,000 house, which is the basic starter home in this area, at a 7% plus interest rate? Because, and I'm going to, here, I'll tell you what, give me a two seconds while I scramble through this because she doesn't have uh, mortgage insurance. I'll, so I'll the, give you... The, the back question ahead, to that now. is, how much are you paying for rent? So going back towards the, the monthly payment of it... I would say someone that's in a first-time home buyer situation in this area is paying a monthly rent payment between $1,500 and $1,800 a month. If not more. If not more. For uh, someone renting a home has is, is got roommates. So they're not paying the entire nut well, of a yeah, place. I mean, unless it's a family. It's There's a, it's no a, studio apartments here. Yeah. So they're renting a room with other people like Eagles Landing, the Villas at Southern Ridge, Turtle Creek, one of the many places I started off with before climbing the ladder here. So a $300,000 house at a 7% interest rate, Scott's doing the math. I would imagine that monthly payment is going to be considerably more than the $1,500, $1,800 a month they're paying in rent. And I can just do, I, we can just look at a mortgage calculator and do that, which I can, you I'm know. adding. I'm adding in uh, yeah. so, insurance, everything. So my, my comment was, is even if it's a couple hundred dollars of above rent, right? I don't know what it is. Chris, uh, Scott's going to give it to us on that end of it. But if, you know, the, it kind of, the question goes to the point that I've been making all along. This division between us and them is just going to get great. All right. So let's say we're twenty six hundred dollars a month, uh, and so not seven six point sixty five. Um, real on a rate sheet, real with the credit that we're pulling. Um, you're, you know, no, there's not significant, most likely going to be discount points. I think we're seeing rates trend in the right direction. But so tw twenty six twenty six to twenty seven hundred dollars. Thousand bucks more a month uh, is what that payment currently would be, um, and then. Once they could refinance, they're going to pull another $500 off that mortgage. And I say they, they end up doing that in the next 24 months, period, without question. Okay. You got your look. So you're looking at, for, for the moms that just asked this question. So we dropped from 27 at a current rate to 22 at a potential refinance in rate. In 24 months. Inside and how much the are you financing? 100%? Years. No, three, so 96.5% FHA, 3.5% down. Your total cash to close is going to come in somewhere around $16,000. Uh, and so that total cash to close is the amount of money that they'll bring to the table at closing. Uh, that's 3.5% down on, uh, we're using 350. Let me make sure I use 350 instead of 300. All right, I'm using 300. Probably looking at 15K at the closing table, total cash down. With points, closing costs, Three and a half is ten thousand five hundred. You guys got to make some money there. You're looking at fifteen thousand. No, I use three fifty. I use three fifty. Okay. So twelve, yeah. Twelve fifty gives you a twenty-six to twenty-seven hundred dollar monthly payment. I'm probably, you know, a little high on taxes and a little high on homeowners insurance. So I feel comfortable saying that. Um, 
especially if you use Jarrett Spencer at Liberty Mutual, who is a fantastic individual to work with. Um, and then you're going to get somewhere between four and five hundred dollars reduced from that when they when they choose to refinance and wait for me and not all the stuff that you get in the mail. So I can say it's too early. We're not there yet. Um, so Jennifer, you're looking at your son or daughter is looking at about a thousand bucks more a month and is going to need to bring fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars to the closing table. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. And the thousand bucks or more a month is going to be over a twenty-four month period of time. And and, the, and not to mention that that thousand dollars more a month, they're going to recoup uh, in their tax bill that they're not getting any money back from in rent. Uh, they're going to receive six hundred dollars of that thousand uh, dollars. Well, no, I'm sorry. Uh, roughly twelve. Six, they, they should be re discounting uh, roughly six grand. I am not a tax professional. You should take this up with a tax professional. But uh, and not H and R Block, please. But not a, yes. Um, I'm sure that we can refer you to we any can. number of trusted people. Um, of the twelve grand that there, uh, that difference is going to be in annual uh, mortgage income. They're going to receive probably six of that uh, back in uh, in refund. Okay, so to your point, and we're going to throw it back to you, with rates where they're at now, the monthly payment has surpassed the monthly rent. Yeah, uh, I got it. I just looked up what's available under $300,000. That's five. Well, how about 350? It goes from It goes from 267 to 324 to 330. There's two in the threes. Then it jumps to 410. This is single that, family detached now. I think that I number gets attack. bigger. I think that number continues to get bigger. But yeah. that's that number that as it continues to so get bigger. So it makes bigger, it worse, right? Now Juan Sarmiento, Louisa County, great job with the Charlottesville Almore Transportation Department. The head technician on the CAT fleet lives in Louisa, says that is an unrealistic scenario in these financially strapped times. Absolutely. So it's part of why I. That's why we got to shoot them straight here. We are shooting straight. Yeah. But back to the question of is the value going down, there's two different questions in here. So what we're talking about is struggling, helping. I'd like him to tell me what a realistic number is before I, ha before I ask or answer any other question. I want him to tell me how much his mortgage should be, um, or what is the maximum amount that is a realistic number? That's so, a fair question. So I, we That's going to be based on income. That's going to be based on opinion. Opinion, so, yeah, that's fair. So talk about rates and talk about tying this all together, as those who watch the show know I chair. Because I can tell you right now that when rates were 2.5%, people were telling me that's outrageous and there's, how, could we, how could we ever make that work? It's like, cool, why don't we wait to get to, to zero then, bro? Yeah, I mean, I, I totally get that. That is, a, that is a buyer objection statement. Beauty is in statement. the eye of the beholder. That's a buyer objection statement. Yeah, but I mean, I guess what it comes down to, and here's, here's what's happening, and, and I think people appreciate the content we air here because we don't hold back, and that's why we get the engagement we do. You have monthly rents in Charlottesville and Admiral County for a single bedroom that are seventeen fifty a month. Keith Smith just said you can't find a home under $300,000. There's two... There's two attached products for sale. Yeah, two units. Two. For, for one bedroom, right? No, the, 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 I take out new construction, guys, so there's, a, there's some new construction. There's, I, I know we're there. There's a couple yeah. in the villas at Southern Ridge right now. Yeah. But you're talking one about, of them at $225,000 asking price. Yeah. You're, talking right. about, you're talking about one bedroom rentals. Yeah, I, I'm talking, I'm talking sharing a house with a, your roomies. What's a three bedroom rental? Uh, well, the three bedroom run, rental is chopped up amongst three for people. For a family. I mean, a family in a three-bedroom rental is probably paying three thousand a month, thirty-four hundred a month. So, so, so guys, four hundred. It's a four hundred and fifty thousand dollars purchase. We want to be super sympathetic to everybody here, right? So, um, just to tie this together and how I see the market changing, as those know, I, I chair the Piedmont Community Land Trust. We just sold in the last two days our last four units at Avon Park at two twenty-five. These are 100% financed on it at 7% on, on that end of it, and they're, they're tickled pink they've got it on that end of it. And the conversation that we're having with them in our counseling sessions is exactly what Scott has said is, look, you know, the, the, they are, the exact conversation is, is, oh, my God, my rent is going up so fast. At least I'm stopping the bleeding, and we'll refinance at some later date. 
That's the conversation that we're having right now. But the problem is, is there's nothing for them to buy. Yeah, and 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 the next, which goes back to our inventory question, which I was not allowed to talk about anymore. Well, talking about inventory, the next three months we are going to continue to see that either grow or the idea of that growing. There are going to be, as we go through what we're going through, they're going to be even locally more potential foreclosures who still have equity in the home that they can get out and get in. Uh, they'll be moving from what their current situation is into a rental, and that's gonna be expensive also. And I think when you look at a three bedroom rental for a family who needs to get out of that situation and into a home. Entry point, I'm looking at it as 3,850. 3,000, $3,850 for a three bedroom rental? Yeah. Okay, so that is m more than a mortgage payment um, with everything all in. Depending but, on the price point of the home. $450,000. So $450,000 home, I got the mortgage calculator here. You got it too. Um, I, I mean, I'm just- <coughs> It's not pretty. No. It's not pretty. And it's um, to go back to um, the need of a trusted advisor. <clears throat> Yona and I put a listing on at this price point that we're talking about, got a contract in very quickly, um, and we're not accepting the contract. And we're not going to accept the contract. It's break even at that point, Scott. We're not accepting. Without the money down. I'm coming up $3,500. So you're talking about $300 savings potentially without the money down. Correct. And that's it. Without the money Let down. Let me check the rate that went in there. Yes, yeah, 6.65. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you, you know. And the rates, and we agree that rental rates probably are going to keep going up, especially if we have, if we have, I'm not going to use the word flood, but if we have potentially more foreclosures coming on market, the University of Virginia continues to grow, NGIC DIA <coughs> continues to grow, they the rental market here is going to continue to climb. That price, that number is going to go up. Your potential mortgage payment is going to go down. So if we're already talking about break even or better for a family of four trying to get into a, th a three bedroom home, uh, you got two kids in one room, kind of, but you're offering more room, maybe there's an unfinished basement that's giving you some options. Uh, and you're, you're, you know, to that point, you may be in Louisa, you may be in Fluvanna, you may be in these surrounding counties, but at the same time, is that not more opportunity for the potential generational wealth growth and doing all of the things that you really need to do to succeed versus being trapped in an apartment? 100% agree with everything you said. I think the challenge that people are facing right now, especially the first time home buyer, is coming up with the monthly down, with the upfront down payment. It's two-sided. It's it's, it's, so it's, as less offers come in, we're gonna get more concessions. If we can come up with how to get you the minimum down payment, that three and a half percent, you're gonna have a tax refund. If you can do anything to shave and be conservative, you are six months away from being there. I if love it. it. If you're buying, if you're a dude, if you're some broke ass dude who's decided that you're gonna get an, an engagement ring, you string together the, the, the intestinal fortitude to, to save what's gonna save to hit whatever that number is. If you are a family who's going, how do we make this next step? You take the drastic cuts up front there to get to that goal. I, I appreciate that. So I, I do. I think the guys... I was a broke-ass dude, by the way. I, so was I. I launched this company 15 years ago. I was eating... I was stealing Chinese food from the Panic Garden Buffet and, and Ziploc bags. Like, legitimately. Or mm -hmm. eating a double I cheeseburger. I you right now. No. I, I would do it right now if I needed to. <laughs> I, I swear. I was broke-ass dude 15 years ago. Legitimately had a welcome... Invite two of my friends to live in the villas of Southern Ridge or I would have defaulted on the mortgage. Like, that is a true story. Um, but I'm, I'm seeing what the, what the real people are putting on the feed because here. Because real people operate from a fear-based mentality, and it's pushed by that, th that thing on the wall. I, I think CNBC is un undoubtedly doing it. The national media is so, undoubtedly so let's, doing let's it. let's change the conversation a little bit. Let's try to offer, um, we, we ha again, we have to be sympathetic, right, to the to millennial that's trying to buy a home, right, and trying to get in here. And I mean, you got Danny O'Day writing I'm, on the show here saying, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to buy a house anytime soon. Exactly. I He's had 26. The, I had the same conversation with my son-in-law who's going to be a, his doctor going, oh, my God, uh, I can't afford a house now. 
And so the conversation has to be is how do we help these folks through that decision? Turn off your squawk box, turn off that. How does, how do, how, back to this conversation, how do you have this conversation through that to help them to do that? Because Scott, I, I love you with all my heart and soul and you know that. Um, but I'm looking at the week over week, this week versus uh, the, the July 1, end of the week, and there's 80 less houses on the market than there was that week ago. And there's going to be even less. So the, I think the inventory is going to drop a little bit. 100%. Drop a little bit. And then so we, we've got inventory dropping. We've got interest rates climbing. And then we have this thing that nobody's talking about this. The next set of buyers is not going to be 6%. The next set of buyers isn't going to be 8%. The next set of buyers is currently in the market now is not going to be It's going to be all thing. cash. It's going to be generational buyers. There is going to be, Keith is going to go, hey, I just sold my house and made a half a million dollars cash, and I'm going to go buy something. That's 100%. That's happening right now. And it's happening now. So I was saying earlier that we're helping a buyer buy, a seller sell their first home, a millennial buyer resell their first home, they got an offer and they were so excited they wanted to accept it. And we said, whoa, 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 time out. We're not going to, we, we've got to talk about this. We got to look at this. This is when the trusted advisor comes in. So the buyer is out of state, wants to put a contract on their house contingent on a sale of a house out of state. And I said, well, you know what? Great idea, time out. And we started doing our job and start talking to the agent up in upstate New York and found out the house has been on the market for 90 days. We did the research that the house isn't on, under contract. We go, no, no, no. We're not taking your house off the market now and with a what if we might sell this and turn it to a dominant. Yeah, have they considered reducing the price to what's actually going to get it sold? Because it sounds right now. It's, it's like overpriced for the market. We got the agent go. on the other side. We did our job and, 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 and had this conversation because to Jerry's point, a lot of these folks have bought the house at the end of the in 2019, 2020, want to sell our house. Now we have to have these honest and open discussions about how this process is going to go. Your value is not going down in this market. The process has changed dramatically in the last 24 months. I think we're beginning to see, if we're, we're saying that it's not going down. I know that it's going down in some areas. Um, there's, there's statistics. I've got people, friends who have listings out there who are doing price reductions. And what was it price right to start with? Everybody thought it was. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the folks that are pricing the homes now, the professionals, and, and we got to get uh, Tova in the mix, Tova Payne in the mix here. The folks that are pricing the homes are basing it on comps. People have to price the homes out of the gate correctly now in this market, and still the reductions are happening. And, and, and all four of us here are in the business. We do this for a living. The average Joe and average Sally is more sophisticated than ever because they're spending all their time on the Realtor app or the Zillow app highlighting or flagging the homes they like. So they see the reductions. You just have to hard it on the Realtor app and then you get an email notification when the reduction happens. Yeah. It's not hard to do. And then you go on the Realtor app and you can see pricing history and where it started and where it dropped. You don't have to be an insider anymore to have these KPIs. Correct, but you also need to look at what they bought it for. Right? That's also on the app. I understand that, but you've got to look at that. You've got to look beyond the, the, the arrow down and look, okay, well, they bought it, and they've made $50,000 of All equity. Right. So the much. apps have calculators on that. Yeah, let's, but let's slow this down. Sure, sure. Um, for your should be, would be, could be, I'm the most savvy home buyer that has ever walked the earth and I know what Zillow tells me attitude versus the do you need to make a real decision because you're getting divorced, you're having a baby, you're making a job change. That's different. That's different. That is what drives real estate transactions, at least in, the, the, in my world. My world is small. I'm just a redneck who moved from Fluvanna to call Papa? You're a super, hard. super hey, smart hey, guy. Hey, a super hey, smart guy that we hey, love at this network. Hey, those hey. people, those people are making decisions that are. Their hand more, has been forced. They need yeah, their to hand do has been something. Forced. Always. Yeah. I've been doing this for three and a half decades. There was always buyers and stuff. There was always the young millennial that needed to buy a house. I was at one point do, 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 doing that. I'd love to hear. Tova's take on this, and the viewers and listeners are asking as well. Juan has said this, 
This dude lives in Louisa and has a great job in the city of Charlottesville. He says, panel, it is realistically unreasonable to expect a first-time home buyer to come up with $15,000 at closing and then expect them to afford a monthly payment rent versus ownership of $1,000 more a month. Without a doubt. That is not sustainable and how you will lose your house. 100%. I, and, 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 it's, and, and I'm not trying to be doom and gloom here. I'm just being real here. It is all over the feed here. Yeah, and, and that is why... I'm not even reading the comments. Yeah, so... That is, that is why I volunteer as much time as I do to help buyers buy homes and try to do these programs. That's why these programs, and there's a little twist that's going to get even worse. As the recession takes hold next year, because it will, all these government programs that I'm using to help people buy will go away. Are evaporating. They are evaporating. At a, I literally had a board meeting about that as reason in my suit and tie after this, that that's literally what we're going to talk about is the evaporation of government money, the 625 that Albemarle County is going to give us, it's not going to happen next year. Now, if you want some house hacks and how to win, and if you want to win, and, and Tova, I, I swear to God, I'm going to pass this <laughs> to you here. You want a house hack? You, you, you contact Scott and Ross Mortgage. You get in a 3.5% down, and you get a house, and you understand that it's a 1,000 monthly delta that you have to cover, but you have two extra rooms. And you can monetize them potentially. Maybe you don't want to hear this over here, I, but you can monetize dude. them potentially by renting them to your homies like I did at the villas, and now it's become a rental. That's a house hack for you. You may not want to tell your broker that, but it, it's don't ask, don't tell. It's what the, the monkeys, the see no evil, hear, hear no evil, yes. speak no evil, yes. the emojis on our phone. I am about creative solutions. Yes, I know you are. And that's why I like you. Is dude figures stuff out. It's 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 uh, my calculus teacher, D W Y G D. Do what you got to do. That's what you are. That's what I am. That's what he is. But we got to get. Let's get Tova in the mix here. Anywhere you want to go. Tova, we apologize. No, she loves it. I think. I do. I, yeah. I love it. Um, the biggest thing for me, honestly, is people need to adjust their expectations. Like right now, obviously, I personally, if I were in a home, I wouldn't be able to buy anything right now, um, just in the financial state. However. I would be saving up my money, going through the right avenues to make sure that if the interest rates, actually when the interest rates do drop, when pricing for houses kind of levels, evens out a little bit, I am in the best position possible in order to buy a house. I think we're kind of always looking for the fastest answer, the quickest answer, and we want what we want right now. And for most people, that's just not happening, and I think that's where a lot of the frustration is coming in, is that I can't get this right now instead of being like, well, I can't get this right now, but what can I do in order to get it in this amount of time? So. So. I think that's fantastic. How about this? There you go. Gave her the props. Bring her back. So I, I think she's coming back, right, Scott? She is coming back. Yeah. That was confidence and conviction right there, Scott Morris. I, from Tova. I, I, I know. I'm aware. I, don't, I actually don't have to make my own decisions anymore. This is like. <laughs> I know. I'm, I, I, I look at my t calendar and I do what I'm told. That is, <laughs> so how did that Best go before Best team member that? ever. Yeah. What's Making that? Making your own decisions. Uh, you know, yeah. I make some good decisions. Um, you make great decisions. I'm also so, kind of, uh, you know, a little wild. So. so I want to give a shout out to Woody Fincher. He's commenting. You want to hear what he has to well, say? Well, before Woody does. Uh, uh, before you do that, I want to give a shout out to him because he opened my eyes up to a new set of data and looking at things that I've never done before. And this is the list price versus sold price. So this goes back to your point about his price, you know, how things are pricing. So I just did Albemarle County last 60 days, single family detached, no new construction. The median uh, list price was 550, excuse me, 500,000, I apologize. And it sold for 515. So the selling for a little bit, a little bit over. When those numbers start balancing and going the other way, that's when the market is starting to really reduce. When the when the actual sales price are are starting going reverse below the listing price. But and I think, I think he said this very succinctly. What what you're saying. If things continue on the current trajectory, inventory will most likely increase as we slide through Q4 and Q1. Rates will quell demand, and sellers will have to, to be more competitive. We are really close to a balance beam shifting. It's very difficult to call at this moment. And you know what? He's a thousand percent right. Um, you know, this is hard to think. The sellers generally catch up way later than the buyers do when there's a shift in the market. 
that's just like the media being days behind like uh what what's actually happening in the mortgage market is getting you know that's that's three days the reporting's three days late every time it's like we've seen a crazy drop in mortgage rates it's like you saw yeah. a crazy drop in mortgage rates. Um, just like uh, them jumping all over this volatility, things are going to continue to be volatile. At the same time, oversold bond market created some couple days of some real insanity, and we're starting to claw some of that back. And I'm telling you, from a global perspective of how how every country, like, you know, uh, I, I, I don't get into this left and right thing. I think the, their, their wings are the same bird. Uh, but ultimately, we we blame who's in charge. So when things are good, somebody gets to cheerlead. And when some when things are bad, they make a lot of excuses. And uh, what we're going to see going forward is a combination of, of both. Like, we're going to see inflation ease and it's going to be, look what I did, look what I did. But a lot of it is, it's not just us. It's a global phenomenon and it's what's impacting all of these other global nations in Europe, Russia, China, uh, as far as how they are affected. And the, the, the recession that co is coming isn't going to be just affected here. And one of the things that it, it hasn't been talked about in the show, and maybe this is just a non-show topic, but I think if there is a... Uh, future domino to drop to put things in place it's going to be business uh, foreclosures not housing foreclosures uh, businesses that took out a ton of debt at low rate and now even faced with a uh, with an impending recession where people are going to be more focused on food housing and maybe clothing, so maybe maybe uh, Amazon keeps keeps killing it. But as that happens, exterior service businesses are going to be a place that starts to see some suffering. I, I think a thousand percent agree with and that. And those foreclosures are what's going to come to terms in the stock market, and also, uh, dude, you you should see the the, the business the, broker leads that are coming across my desk exactly because of that. Get me out of this problem. Yeah. That's that's literally what's being Who said. Who can I sell this to? That's a hundred percent. And to add to that, and I'll leave names out of it, but there are several. You're going to start seeing several contractors start fizzling their way out of the market. I think that's a mistake. Excuse me. I think that's a mistake. Well, it's going to happen because when there was free money, they were buying all this equipment at free money, and now they're they're. They're these Can't they yearly depreciate or like a huge chunk. Well, of that? There, there's there's that, uh, Mr. I, Morris. But but I can tell you from firsthand when you buy hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment that's tied to Prime, because that's how this works. I know. Um, all of a sudden, you went from this to multiple times that, and oh by the way, work is slowing down. You know, the two eventually crash. I think you're 100. percent I think you're 100 percent right on that. Um, Vanessa Parkhill, parent of two, queen of Earliesville, watching the program. I think the unfortunate reality, and her kids are the 25 to 30. I mean, college-educated, white-collar jobs. Unfortunately, the reality that many young people have, are facing is that if you're 25 to 30, you just can't afford to move into a home that is plush or as nice as, as your parents was. I'm not sure that's a new thing, but it's certainly being exaggerated in this market. So many young adults in the central Virginia area have grown up in beautiful homes and now are faced with the predicament of going into something that is undoubtedly a fixer-upper, maybe even below the starter standards that we've become accustomed to. And they're frustrated when the only options they have are a condo, finding we roommates, such a boozy or moving to Waynesboro. Life. There's sometimes a difference between being able to afford a house versus being able to afford the house that you can pay for expectations need to be realistic. That's brilliant, Vanessa. And I'll add one item to that that is, is growing uh, rapidly. Uh, I'm trying to find the percentage of it. Multi-generational homes is starting to grow. I mean, I've got a friend of mine who comes from a bougie-ass background, and she went out uh, and in D.C. and in uh, pockets of Northern Virginia bought less than desirable places had apartments that when she leave the apart she could get out of the apartment early to go try to buy 
borrowed hard money, lived in some just just not good places, but then turned each one of those places into a, a money-producing property. None of them were nice as what she grew up in, but she was smart, and she had realistic expectations. And if you, if part of the problem is kids, and I say kids, I'm, I'm 43 years old. If you're, if you're, you're 20, a young man. If you're 22 to 25 year old, you're a kid. And if you think that you can, you're you're like this this entrepreneur on Facebook or TikTok or whatever, trying to become some influencer, and you're going to take this influencer money and roll it into buying this bougie house, you don't live in the realm of reality. Now, if you're someone who's got a real job and you're upset that you can't go buy a house as nice as what your parents bought 30 years ago. That should not be your focus. The focus on wealth growth and how you can get there and the, the home hacks that Jerry said that I would never like want to hear about, I can listen with a blind ear from time to time. <laughs> uh, develop a plan. You know, make it get – you live, we live in one of the most highly developed nations in the world. We – you can say what you want about uh, – uh, how our economy is driven and who it serves. We've lifted more people out of poverty through the way that we do things, but unfortunately, we've allowed that, that thing on the wall, that box, or now the phone, to convince you that everybody needs to be a millionaire by the time they're 25. It's, the, it's, it's one of the fatal flaws of social media, where like you're constantly on Instagram and you see mid-20-year-olds posing know, in front of the Lamborghini with their foot be, on the hood. The reality is it's, that's not their Lamborghini. It doesn't, and it doesn't matter. The people who are going to win are going to be the people who want to win, and the people who want to make excuses are going to continue to make excuses. That's so true. That is so true. Brittany Smith, Smith um, giving you some props right Hello, now. Hello, Brittany. Um, Toby, you need to come back. Um, you got fans all over the place here across the Commonwealth. Uh, and we also want to get your take. Neil Williamson, welcome to the program. Hey, um, I think the next situation that we need to watch out for is the uh, entrepreneurs who got into Airbnb arbitrage um, that just started scooping up homes because money was cheap and then said, I want to be uh, in the Airbnb business. Guess what's going to happen when uh, this recession really puts an impact or a stress on disposable income? People ain't going to be Airbnb in your cribs anymore. Maybe not, and maybe not even your. Uh, maybe you might have a good place to go with your storage unit that you've already converted into a house for whoever's doing that. Yeah, uh, just round Joey round loves that over there, right yeah, there. I, I would love. I mean, we only have four mics, but this guy's got a take on this as someone that is mid twenties um, in the area. We'll, we'll save that for another show. Twenty two. Twenty one. Oh, twenty one. I apologize. Sorry, I thought you were twenty two. Um, I wasn't digging on you, bro. I'm just saying that some of your people have unrealistic expectations. I think he would agree. Very true. I would totally he would totally agree with that. I think he would totally agree with that. Um, Vanessa has given you props saying, amen, Scott. That was real what you just said right there. Um, we we want to get takes here from, this is great content. This is resonating with the people. Tova here, Keith here in a matter of moments. Um, another house hack that you can consider is, and maybe Scott doesn't want to hear this, is you buy the house and if you don't want the roommate full time, which is what I did when I literally was going to lose my condo in 2008, 2009 at the Villas at Southern Ridge, another one could be taking the individual rooms and Airbnb being them out on high uh, popular uh, weekends. Graduation weekend. Graduation weekend, football game weekends. You can get serious money for that and then you don't have the roommate full time 12 months. These two guys don't want to hear that, but I have a list of maybe. I mean, I, that doesn't even bother me hearing it, as long as you know I explain to you when we go through the process that that's not mortgage qualifying income, and you are the primary residence of the house, and uh, don't do anything stupid. Talk, yeah, and also talk. You to have her, no exposure at that. Yeah, point. talk to the, your homeowners and whoever's handling your homeowners, and make sure that you've put some place in there in case like some jackass burns your house down when you're not there, and they know you know. And then they find out like what you were doing. Your insurance has got to be legit. Make sure your policies are legit yeah. and your HOA. Because if you violate it, your HOA will, make sure. will fine you big time. Yeah, your big HOA time. is something to consider so, as well. So to go back to what's available, Lake Monticello, we pick this all the time, right? Literally, there's, there's 18 homes, which is actually good. That's up a couple of ticks than it normally is. There's only two homes in Lake Monticello under the price of $300,000. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, we haven't even talked about this. City of Charlottesville and Almaro County are 100% going to raise the real estate tax rate next year. It is 100% going to happen. 
So your monthly payment, your taxes, will go up in eight months. How many cents on the dollar? That makes sense on the hundred dollars. City of Charlottesville is talking between two and four right now to fund Buford School re reconfiguration. I know it's not a huge delta, but I took a look at what's sold. That's a lot. It, it, it's it, significant. Yeah. And as 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 the market changes a little bit, your taxes, your insurance is also going to go up a little well, bit. Well, and so at the same time, the assessments went up. Your assessments going to go up if you're in an HOA. Your HOA is going to go up because they're spending more money, and that's how they get their money. But I wanted to go back to the what Woody Woody has turned me on to about taking a look at list versus sale. So I took at Lake Monticello the last 30 days. Um, there was a delta of five thousand dollars between what list and what 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 sold. Excuse me. I apologize. Three thousand dollars that sold. The month before it was five thousand. So we're going backwards. In other words, this list versus sold. So we're going to keep a close track on that because uh, you know, as as Woody explained to me, I, I think that's a really good uh, metrics to track because then we're going to start really seeing the potential of the market valuation going backwards. The, the viewers and listeners are itching, itching, to hear from Tova Payne. Tova Payne. Anywhere you want to go, any topic you want to cover. Multiple folks have said you've brought, uh, you, you go about life sensibly and physically conservatively, which I, I, I don't even know you. I, I met you approximately um, an hour and six minutes ago, and I get the impression you are physically conservative. Um, I mean, with the Airbnb, I'm actually curious to see how many people decided to buy rentals when the rates were that, because I even considered buying a rental when the rates were at, you know, two and a half or whatever, or three. But how many of them were like, oh, this is a bad idea? And they are like, are those houses going to also flood the market within the next six months or so? Because they're like, this is a bad idea. I don't like this idea. And now they can also still recruit some loss that they, you know, even if they're not getting the rent income from that, they're still getting, you know, a massive lump sum when they sell their house. So where that market, I think, is going to be the most impacted is on the edge of this rubber band, right? The people that in the COVID she's moved, watching. moved out yeah, to sure she's moved out to say Nelson or or some of the outer areas because that's where they wanted to be, and then now realizing, oh, this is not where I want mm -hmm. to be, and they want to move back in. I think you're going to start seeing the the, the properties on these outer edges of these rubber band, and you know, as it stretched stretched out. I think that's where you're going to see the largest impact. I think the closer you get to the center, Charlottesville, the Urban Ring, you know, close into Fulvana or Green or Louisa or like that, but some of these outer counties um, that people were moving in droves back in there, I think that's where you're going to see the largest Do we, do impact. we, and we're at 11.35, so we're going, to, we're going to wind down here, especially for young Jedi getting ready for the next show, Joey Rifkin. Do we see a flood of foreclosure inventory? Or think a, coming on the market? I think a flood is a big word. Okay. I think we see enough to where it helps extend days on market. I think there's still enough ac uh, uh, equity in a lot of these homes that they get out before they're really for their true foreclosures. Uh, they may get into short sale territory first. Um, and so you do see the impact of vulnerable inventory hitting the market soon? Yes. Um, Me too. I've talked to people who know that these these numbers are increasing month over month, um, and I mean, I think those people should fight to stay in the homes. But I also think that if you can get out while you're still in an equitable position and press reset, take some of that cash and fix your problems, that's what you need to do. Uh, those people who are they're already behind on payments, so you can't cash out at this point. Um, for those people who are in the position to where they want to cash out, even with the higher rates, let's do the math. Are you 20, 000, multiple $20,000 credit cards deep? And this taking going from 3% to 8.5% on a cash out refinance makes sense. And I might, hopefully I'm quoting you high there, maybe we're 7, 7x. Seven but does that solve your cash flow problem for the next 24 months until we can refinance you again uh, and back into a, a, a fixed rate? Like, look at what's going on. Talk to a trusted advisor, and you know, let's let's solve some problems. So uh, I'm a member of Atom, and Atom is who who follows the foreclosure process. 
we're, let's say, under 50,000. We used to be at 3 million. But here's an important conversation for whoever's listening and watching this. When you hit 31 days in the state of Virginia, you've lost control, right? You've lost control. You're saying when you miss a mortgage payment by 30, 31 days or by more. By 31, thank yeah. you. You've lost control of the situation. The banks now are in control of what's going on. So the biggest thing on that is you feel that that's going to happen. You, you've got to pick up the phone and call Scott. You've got to come up the phone and call a trusted advisor and start that conversation with it because what the banks are doing right now, and this is what I'm reading on all these different feeds and, and articles, I mean, they're just saying, okay, you will sell your house. Right, and you sell your house because they don't want to go through the foreclosure process. They, they, they don't want to be landers. That's, oh, they it cost, cost them a money. ton. Banks of money. hate owning real estate, and they also yeah. know the market is hot, so they want to get rid of the inventory as quickly as possible, so it gets off their balance sheet. So un they know the time to sell is now. So I've been through the time of great unpleasantness. I've had this happen to me, right, um, by multiple millions of dollars on that end of it. They they don't want to do it. They want to work it out. They don't want to own 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 real estate. So reach out to your process or reach out to your service, reach out to Scott and see if they can help help navigate that because they, they want to go ahead and, and just put it on the market, get rid of it. You are now, unlike the time of great unpleasantness, if you are in, you are scared and you're in this problem, you're in a unique position. You have you, equity. You've got equity. Yeah. I lost And equity. buyers. And buyers. I lost equity. Phew. Yeah, there was a time where, you know, you saw, you drove through neighborhoods. 2008, and, yeah. 2009. Uh, even in 2012, you were still seeing neighbors, like the four Ghost towns. Signs, but, but four sale signs everywhere um, just because they couldn't find buyers for houses. Yeah, so my biggest mistake I made in that process is I thought I can fix it. You can't fix this, right? Pick up the phone, call a trusted advisor before you hit that 31 days. Then after that, it's all over. Let's do some final words here. Why don't we go, uh, ladies first? She's absolutely hit a grand slam. Tova Payne of Ross Mortgage. I got a feeling it's going to have a permanent seat potentially in this uh, network, much to the chagrin potentially of Tova Payne here. Uh, you're fantastic at what you do. I see why you're an asset to Ross Mortgage. These are the folks you would interact with real people living in the market who know the business, who will go to war for you. Scott is that guy, literally and figuratively. Literally and figuratively, I get the impression Tova is, is, is as well. The show is yours, Tova. Ooh. I don't even know. Um, I don't have words. What advice would you give to somebody who has decided that they want to do this, they're close, but they're just not there? Come up with a plan. I mean, write down a plan or, you know, look at your assets, look what you have, look at your credit. Like, um, the biggest thing, honestly, is money management. Like, can you manage your money better in order to put you in a better position? Like, that's, that's the biggest thing that I've seen on, in all of the loans that I've done is money management, whether your credit score is not where you want it to be or whether you don't have the funds to close or, you know, uh, to, if you want to pay down points, if you don't have those funds, that's the best place to start and that's the advice. Well said. Bravo. Thank you. Scott Morris. Create a plan. Create a plan. Um, so, I've got some stuff going on, you know, personally that we talked about at the beginning of the show that I'm not going to dive back into. But shop-wise, um, I'm bringing somebody on at the end of this week who's going to be an absolute asset. He's also going to be an asset to something I'm going to call branch growth. I've got someone who I hope is listening right now that I will not mention, but um, I'm very focused on uh, bringing her in and expanding our footprint even more and uh, making some incredible, incredible things happen. And I know you are the person, and I believe in you, and I believe in us in, in making this a, a new thing. Um, for everybody out there watching, uh, take action now. Whether if, if you're trying to figure out what your next step is, uh, create a plan. I think that some of the comments that we got are super fear-based. Um, no doubt. And, and that has to do with either the media that you're consuming or your true expectation of reality. Because we showed you that for, at and it may, you know, 450 is a tougher price point to be an entry level position. But at the same time, when you're talking about college grads, some of which are coming out making six figures, um, and if they're coupling those into, um, we're going to get married, build a family. Um, well, 
I would go against your parents and tell you you're too young to do that. Yes, um, please, wait. <laughs> uh, at the same time, when you guys get divorced, you'll be able to split the house then, too. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just consider... Wait a high, end on a high note, Scott. <laughs> Wait <laughs> until your 30s. Wait until your 30s before you get married, please. Um, how we were... I don't. I'm, I can speak for my homie Scott. How I was at 20, 23 was very different nobody, than how I was no, at 35. Let me tell you something. Nobody was married at 23. Yeah. Time. I think this man did. I was married at 23, had my first child. How old were you when you got married? I'm going to go with my favorite no comment. No comment. There you go. She's taking the fifth right there. I love it. So I'm going to, I'm going to plug the benefits of that. All right. Yeah, plug the, the plug that, was the a, that was an the ending plug, that on a downer. Plug, no, I, I think it was fair. The, it was realistic. Yeah. So uh, my wife and I were just talking about that as our youngest daughter is expecting with our third grandchild child. And as the elder states person at the, at the table, what an awesome experience it is to be 60 and be able to enjoy my grandchildren. So this is why you should get seven. married at 23. So when your, no, your no, grandparents no, can no, have spent we, some time with you when you're, uh, yeah. they can still move. But, but I, do, I do want to go back to being 23, right? I was 24 when I bought, I was 23 when I got married, started our business, had our first child, bought our first house at 24. As Mr. Miller very clearly knows, at 18% interest, been through all kinds of ups and downs, lost everything I had, not just once, but three times. So anybody in my business, if you don't lose everything three times, you're just not trying hard enough, you need to try a little bit harder on that end of it. And I want to speak directly to the people that are concerned, right? You know what? I've lived it. I've been through it. I understand it. Uh, everybody at this table understands it. Um, reach out to the trusted advisor. I just wrote down, this is show 372. Almost all of those 372, we've used this term trusted advisor, right? It hasn't changed in three and a half years, almost four years. It probably won't change going forward. Much like the conversation about, oh my God, I can't pay my mortgage payment. What do I do? Reach a trusted advisor. If you want to buy, reach a trusted advisor. And we'll come up with a plan, like Tova said. There's a plan. Right? It may not happen today, but there's a plan. Um, you know, and I know that's very high level, maybe a bit Pollyannic, but it's true. It's worked for 35 and a half years. It will continue to work for the next 35 and a half years. Um, and the reality of it is there is always a shift in the market. So hire a trusted advisor. There you go. Great show. Love it. You Wednesday here? Next Wednesday? Yeah. Um, I'm a strong maybe. Okay, awesome. I hope you are. Make the show better. Thank like, you. for real. That's, thank you. That, Keith, that's not an insult. <laughs> no. No, it definitely was not. <laughs> it definitely was not. Uh, you make the show better. Come back. <laughs> Seriously. Please come back. Well, folks are putting in the feed when they got married and what age. I love this show. I absolutely love this show. Wait till you see your phone first time you've been on the show with your notifications on Facebook. Oh, um, Joey Rifkin, um, the director, filling in for Judah Wickhauer. Great job. Yeah, he did, did a great work. job. Dude, because there was a lot of stuff happening here. Man showed up late. First time guy on the show. First time gal on the show here. There was a lot of moving parts. Were, were there not? There was a lot. There was we a lot. It. We got it. We got it done. We oh, got did it I done. mention on the last show, and I'll say it again in case I can catch her, Roxanne Carter-Johnson has committed to me to do oh, a show. Oh, I can add to that. I was at a board year. meeting with her yesterday. Okay. And would not let her leave the board meeting until she agreed to it. So, so Roxanne's going to come on the Roxy? show. Roxy? Roxy? Yeah, we should do it. We love you. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Let's do it. I love it. Um, Real Talk. Real Talk with Keith Smith, guys. Presented by Ross Mortgage. Thank you for letting me come If you need late, somebody guys. to help you get through this, Ross Mortgage. Scott Morris. Tova Payne, John Snow, and the crew. Um, the I Love Seville show is going to be up in 44 minutes, so the young Jedi is going to have his back against the wall. Um, thank you kindly for joining us. So long, everybody. Take care.